Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using variables in Ruby. Now, in Ruby, you're going to be dealing with a lot of different data. And generally, anytime you write a program, there's going to be all sorts of data that you want to maintain and manage. And a lot of times, when you're dealing with large amounts of data, it can be difficult to manage it, it can be difficult to keep track of it. So in Ruby, we have a special container where we can store data values called a variable. And a variable is pretty awesome because we can actually take a piece of data or a piece of information in our Ruby programs, we can store it inside of a variable, and then whenever we want to use that piece of data or access it or modify it, we can just refer to its variable container. And you'll see in this tutorial why variables can be really useful. So let's go ahead and jump in. Down here I have a basic Ruby program written out. Essentially all it does is it prints out a story. It says, there once was a man named George. He was 70 years old. He really liked the name George, but didn't like being 70. And you'll see I'm just using this puts instruction over here. And here it's just printing out the story onto the screen. So we're essentially just printing out everything that's over here onto the screen over here. So this is a pretty awesome program, right? It works, it's completely valid. But let's say that I wanted to go inside of my little story here and start modifying some of the information, right? Let's say that I wanted to change the character's name. So maybe I don't like the name George and I wanna change his name to John. So I'm gonna have to go through and I found that first place where the character's name was and I have to keep searching through and then, okay, here's another place where we have the character's name. So I'm gonna change it. So now I've officially changed the character's name in the story. But let's say that I'm reading over the story again and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I think we can make the character a little bit younger. So instead of 70, why don't we make him 35, right? So again, I'm gonna have to look through this entire program. All right, found the first 70, so I'll change this to a 35. I have to keep looking through and okay, here's the other 70, so we'll change this to 35. All right, so now I've updated the name and the age. But here's the problem. When I wanted to change the character's name and the character's age, I had to manually go into my program, into this story, and modify each value. So every place where the character's name was mentioned, I had to update it to the new name. Every place where the character's age was mentioned, I had to go in and update it. And this is kind of a problem, right? This is a situation where we have two pieces of data, the character's name and the character's age, and we're trying to keep track of that information, right? But imagine that instead of just having a story that was four lines, I had a story that was hundreds of lines long, right? And they mentioned the character's name, you know, hundreds of times. If I wanted to then go through and change my character's name and my story, it would be a real drag, right? I would have to look through hundreds of lines of code in order to do that. Same goes for the age. And this is actually where variables come in. So this is a perfect example of a time where we have two pieces of information, the name and the age, and we wanna be able to keep track of them and maintain them a lot better than we currently are. So what I can actually do is I can create a container and I could put the character's name inside of its own container. I could put the character's age inside of its own container. And then when I want to access that information and use it, I can just access that container. And that container is called a variable. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can use variables to seriously increase the usability of this program. So up here, up above these puts lines, I'm actually gonna create a variable. And whenever we create a variable, we need to give Ruby some information. The first piece of information we need to give Ruby is the name of the variable that we wanna create. So generally when we create a container to put information in inside of our programs, we like to give it a descriptive name, right? Generally you wanna give the container a name that will identify what information is inside of it. So the first thing I'm gonna go do over here is type in the name of the variable that I wanna create. So I'm gonna create one called character name. And generally in Ruby, if you're creating a variable, you want to give it a descriptive name. And if there's going to be multiple words like character name, you want to separate them with an underscore. So the next thing I have to do is tell Ruby what I want to store inside of this variable. So I can just say character name and I can use this equal sign and I can set it equal to a value. So I can say character name equals and I'm just gonna say John, because this is gonna be the new character's name. So now I've officially created a variable called the character name. 
The next thing we can do is create another variable to store the character's age. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to say character age, and I'm going to set this equal to 35. So now we have two variables, both of which are storing values. So down here in my program, what I can actually do instead of just typing out the character's name like this, you know, manually, I can actually just refer to the variable that is storing the character's name. So over here, instead of saying there once was a man named John, I can actually just get rid of this. And outside of these quotation marks, I'm actually going to make a plus sign. And now I'm going to type out the name of the variable that I want to put in here. So I'm just going to say character underscore name. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying I want to type out all of this text over here. Plus, I want to type out the value that's inside of the character's name. So I want to print out the value that's inside this character name variable. There's one more thing we have to do. Anytime you're using a string of text like this, and you're also using a variable name, you need to surround this whole thing with parentheses. So I'm going to put a parentheses over there, and I'm going to put a parentheses over here. And so now, we'll actually be able to use this program. So let's go ahead and we're going to run this program. And now you'll see that over here, it still says there once was a man named John. He was 35 years old, etc. But you'll notice that we didn't have to manually print, like type out the word John. All we had to do was refer to the actual variable name, character name. So I just referred to this variable and it was able to insert the value that was stored inside that variable inside of our print statement. So I could basically do this same thing for this guy down here. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste this in down here. So now I'm adding in the character name where John was in that other spot. So over here, we're also going to have to put another parentheses and I'm going to do the same thing for the character's age. So over here, once again, we'll just surround this with parentheses and now I'm just going to close off both of these. So I have two separate little strings of text inside of quotation marks, and I'm going to put a plus sign. I'm going to type in the variable name, character age, and then I'm going to put another plus sign. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm telling Ruby that I want to print this out. Plus I want to print out the value inside of the character age variable. Plus I want to print this out over here. So that's essentially what this is doing. And we can do the same thing down here. So and again, we're going to need to surround this with parentheses. So once we've done this, now we've actually set up our program to use all of these variables. So every place where we mentioned the character's age, we replaced it with the character age variable. Every place where we mentioned the character's name, we replaced it with the character name variable. So when I run this program now, you'll see over here, we get exactly the same output as we did before. We're printing out the same exact story. The only difference is now that we're using variables, our program is a lot better. So for example, if I wanted to change the character's name inside of my story, instead of having to go through and manually change it in every single spot where we mentioned it, I can actually come up here and just modify it. So I could change the character's name to Mike. And now without having to modify anything else in my entire program, the character's name is going to be updated to Mike. So you can see now, it's using the name Mike. And that's really why variables are powerful because they allow us to organize and they allow us to keep track of the information and the data inside of our programs a lot better. The other thing you can do is you can actually modify the value of variables. So let's say halfway through my story, I wanted the character's name to change. I can actually come down here and I'm just gonna put this line of code right after these first two and right before these second two. I could change the value of a variable. So I could say character name and I can just set it equal to something else. So I could set it equal to Tom, for example. So now when I go and run my program, you'll see that halfway through the story, the character's name changes. So over here it's Mike and then halfway through it changes to Tom. So you can update and modify the values of these variables throughout your program and that can be extremely useful. So that's sort of the basics of variables and these can be really useful. There's a lot more that we can talk about. So for example, over here, I'm just storing text information, right? I'm storing like the text, Mike, I'm storing the text 35 down here. We're using all this text, 
But in Ruby, we can actually represent and we can store a bunch of different types of data inside of our variables. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next tutorial. We're going to be talking about data types. So there's all different types of data types. We can sort of like text data, numbers, true, false values, a bunch of different stuff. So stick around for the next tutorial and we'll talk about that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.